We are thankful and honored that you chose to be at Connection Assembly today. If you're visiting with us, welcome. We are glad that you're here. You can go ahead and be finding Hebrews chapter 12. Also find, um, find 2 Kings chapter 5. Hebrews 12 and 2 Kings chapter 5, that's where we're going to be uh, beginning today. We'll branch out who knows where from there, but gives us a starting, gives us a starting spot. Amen. So excited for uh, today, this morning's service. Again, thankful that you're here. believe God has great things in store for you and your family. Also excited for tonight. Tonight is our, our women's night here at the church at 5 o'clock. Um, all you ladies, come back at 5 o'clock. We're going to have an, uh, another great time of worship. And our own uh, Cindy Sherman is going to be bringing a word. And uh, I've seen some of the notes uh, as they were preparing for the, for the slides and stuff. And it's going to be really, really good. Uh, the Lord flows through her in gifts and in the prophetic and... She's going to take some time at the end and pray for anybody that wants to be prayed for. I believe you'll really be blessed, so I encourage you to be here for that uh, tonight. Our men are headed out later this week to men's retreat. We're excited about that. I think we got uh, right at 20 guys going to men's retreat. So good stuff going on this week. Um, as always, if you are interested in giving, um, and if you are a member here and you pay your tithe, there's boxes in the back, envelopes in the seat. Uh, you can check out, take advantage of our Church Center app, and uh, I encourage you to check out our Church Center app. That's where it's at, y'all. That's where you can keep up with everything that's going on, the calendar, uh, different groups. Um, it's just a great way to stay um, informed and connected. All right, I'm giving you just a minute to get adjusted and get settled in and Figure out where you're supposed to be going. We're in Hebrews chapter 12 and we're in 2 Kings chapter 5. And we are in a series uh, following up another series. But uh, we just finished up a series uh, titled uh, Jesus Did It, It Is Finished. Thank God for that. Amen. Amen. Jesus did it. What did he do? Everything. Everything that needed to be done, he did it. He did everything we couldn't do. He's the only one that could do it. Amen. Ultimate sacrifice, made the way, paid the way. He did it all. Come on. And so now everything uh, that's his is available uh, to us. Uh, we're able to be forgiven. We're able to be in right standing with the Father. We're able to live holy and blameless and righteous lives all because of what Jesus did. However, many of you know he doesn't force himself upon us. He gives us free will. And so we just moved right from Jesus did it, it is finished, into another series. And today is week number two, titled It's Up to You. Look over at your neighbor and say, it's up to you. It's up to you. What's up to you? Well, a lot of things are up to you. It's up to you whether you believe it. Whether you accept it, whether you walk in it, whether you enjoy it, it's up to you what you do with it. Jesus did it. It's finished. It's available. But now there's so many things that are up to you. And so we, we talked last week about how it's up to you to either uh, give up or get up. You can give up or get up. And uh, I took you to the pool of called the Pool of Bethesda, where the man had been laying on a mat for 38 years. And Jesus came to him and said, do you want to get well? Well, Jesus was basically saying, it's up to you. I'm here. It's available to you. Do you want to get up? Do you want to stay there? And so um, today, we're moving on to part two. And uh, today is, uh, it's up to you to give it up. To give it up. Um, to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow Him. There's some things that in order for us to follow Jesus, there's some things we may have to give up. There's some things that we may have to give up. Hello? Now, I've kind of wrestled around with this message, uh, but I hear the Lord saying, keep doing what you're doing. 
Um, I'm going to say some of the same things that if you've gone to this church for a while, you've heard me say before. I'm going to address some of the same things. I'm going to confront some sin, and I'm going to confront some... But I felt like the Lord said, keep doing what you're doing, because in order to follow Jesus, you cannot follow Him and the world. You have to make a choice. That's why Jesus said, anyone who would come after me must. Everybody say must. must. Not an option. Must deny yourself. There's some things that aren't allowed. There's some things you've got to give up. That your flesh wants that is contrary to the spirit. Hello? Flesh and spirit are in opposition to each other. You cannot follow Christ and live according to your flesh and please your flesh. There's some things you have to give up. That... That it's not honoring to God, it's not pleasing to God, it's, it's, it's an, it's a, it's an, it confronts God, it puts you in opposition to God. Hello? And if that's the case, you have to give it up. Right? Deny yourself, take up your cross, cross is a symbol of death, you have to die to self. There's some things that I might want to do, but I can't because I'm a follower of Jesus. I won't because I'm a follower of Jesus. I've given it up. I've given it up because I can't have him and that. Hello? And so I felt like as I was was preparing for this and wrestling through this, I thought, God, why are you making me say some of the same stuff, hit some of the same? And I said, God, I just feel like I'm irritating people. And he said, you are, and that's good. That's what I assigned you to do. Listen, if some of the things that I say today irritate you, then there's probably something inside of you that you need to give up. There's probably something there that that the Holy Spirit is is poking at and dealing with you about, telling you, you need to give this up. He's convicting you about it. And my voice speaking the truth is irritating that part of you. And so if I irritate you today, I love you, but I'm just going to keep irritating you. (laughs) Because I felt like the Lord said, just keep... He said, keep preaching the truth in love. I'm not here to judge you. I'm not against you. But keep preaching the truth in love. Right? Because it's working. The Word of God, the truth of God's Word, with the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit, coupled together, flowing through a servant of the Lord, it's a powerful, it's a powerful thing. It convicts hearts. That irritation that you may be feeling, I'm praying that it, that, it, that, that the Holy Spirit flips a switch and you don't just leave here irritated. Ed Gummit, he had to talk about that again. <laughs> but that there's a conviction from the Holy Spirit because conviction is good. Right? He's not trying to condemn us, but he wants to convict us. Hello? So if you feel convicted today, high five. That's a good thing, a great thing. I want that. I'm praying for that to happen, okay? So just know that I'm aware that I may be irritating you, but it's okay, right? I've always heard that if you're not either making somebody mad or glad, you're not, do, you're not preaching it right. So I may make some of you mad and some of you may shout me down. I don't know, but uh, here we go. Here we go. We're going to leave it up to the Holy Spirit, right? So it's up to you. Give it up, part two here. Hebrews chapter 12, beginning at verse 1, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, there's people watching us, we're surrounded by a host of heaven, let us throw off, give it up, get rid of it, everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance. The race marked out for us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him, Jesus, who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Right? So... I want us to jump on down into this. I've got four things today from this passage of Scripture that we need to give up. Okay? Number one, according to the Word of God, you need to give up anything 
that is hindering you. Whatever may be hindering you, you need to give it up. When something is hindering you, it, it makes it difficult for you. It is obstructing you. It is inhibiting you. It is holding you back. So anything that might be obstructing you or holding you back today, whatever that may be, I'm not going to list a whole bunch of things. I'm going to kind of generalize some things. But you need to give it up. You need to throw it off. We don't need to allow anything to get in the way to obstruct us to hold us back from believing and from receiving uh, and from following Jesus. Amen? And from enjoying the life that He came that we could have. All that God has in store for us. Amen? And so I want to, real quickly, I want to take us to two different people, two different passages of Scripture. And I want to t show you a couple of guys that, that had something going on and they had a choice. Um, and, and let's just see what happened to them. I want you to go to 2 Kings chapter 5. Right? We're talking about giving up anything that may be hindering you or that might would hinder you from receiving, from following. Are you with me? So 2 Kings chapter 5, it says, Now Naaman was commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master, highly regarded, because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. Now bands from Aaron had gone out and had taken captive a young girl from Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. And she said to her mistress, If only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. And Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. By all means, go, the king of Aram replied. I'll send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten sets of clothing. And a letter that he took to the king of Israel, which read, With this letter I am sending my servant, Na my servant Naaman to you, so that you may cure him of his leprosy. And as soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his robe, and he said, Am I God? Can I kill and bring back to life? Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of his leprosy? See how he's trying to pick a quarrel with me? And when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his robes, he sent this message, Why have you torn your robes? Have the man come to me, and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him. Go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan and your flesh will be restored and you will be cleansed. Told him the man of God, the prophet, sent word. Here's what you need to do. Now I want you to notice what happened here, okay? So at that point, it was up to him. It's up to him. I've told you what you need to do. Now it's up to you. And it says... But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. I thought that he would do this, but he didn't. And Naaman's mad about this because it's not happening the way he thought it would happen. And then he said, Are not Abana and Farpar the rivers of Damascus better than any of the waters in Israel? Couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? So he turned and went off in a rage. Now the man of God had, had presented him with a, with a cure. Here's what you need to do to be cured. Now track with me this morning. But he refused it and decided to go off in a rage, he got angry and said, no, thank you. No, thank you. You know what I see here with Naaman? You know what hindered him and obstructed him? From almost, we're going to finish this in a minute, but from almost receiving what he needed to receive from the Lord, his pride. His pride, if you look at it, if you back up to that first verse, Naaman was a man of position, he was a man of power. 
He was a man of prestige. He had lots of possessions. He had great wealth. Right? He almost let all of these things which can induce pride and cause people to become prideful in who they are, in their position. He almost let pride hinder him, obstruct him, hold him back from receiving the one thing that he needed the most. I can't believe he did it like that. I, I can't believe he's having me go dip in that river. Can I go to a cleaner river? It was pride. He didn't even have the gall to come out here and meet me face to face. He sent a messenger. He didn't even, I, didn't even, I didn't even get to hear him pray. It was pride. Listen to me. We've confronted this. We've hit this like a sledgehammer over and over and over. And I was thinking, Lord, I've hit that several times, this pride thing. And he said, hit it again. <laughs> I was watching this DIY show the other night. And there was this guy te tearing off this countertop. And it was concrete and had like mesh in it, rebarb, all of this. I've never seen. He said, I've never seen a countertop built like this. They wanted this to last till Jesus come. He said, I thought it was going to take me an hour. It took me a half a day. But it showed him just beating that countertop with it, just beating it and beating it. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, that's you. <laughs> that's you. That's you just beating some of those same things in those same places over and over and over. Because pride... Pride is such a hindrance. And, and listen, this was a man, and we're fixing to talk to another man, but it, it's especially prevalent and powerful in men. That we get self-reliant and we get... Listen, Naaman was really relying on his power and his prestige and his position and I'm going to take all of these gifts and all of this money and all these things that I require, that I've acquired and I'm, I'm going to, because of who I am and what I have, the man of God is going to give me special attention and favor. And I think Elisha was just like, I'm not even going to come out and talk to you. Messenger, go tell him to go jip in the Jordan. And that's why he went away angry. What made him angry? His pride. His pride was hit. His pride was, it was, his pride was being confronted. That Naaman, you've got everything you think you want and need except the one thing that you need the most. And his pride was, a, was, was blocking him. He couldn't get past. I can't believe he didn't come out here. I can't believe he's telling me to go dip in that nasty river. Hear me, men. Talk to you for just a second. Don't let pride be a stumbling block. Don't, don't let pride be such a hindrance. You know what? The Bible talks about seven things that God hates that are an abomination to Him. And you know what's at the top of that list? Pride. Pride. You know what got Lucifer kicked out of heaven? Pride. The Bible says that, that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Now, thankfully, let's finish reading this because thankfully, like is going to happen to many of you here today, Naaman got some sense spoken into him. And he came to his senses. Let's see what happened. Okay? So, so he's going off in a rage. He's angry. Because of his pride. And in verse 13 it says, Naaman's servant went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more then when he tells you, wash and be cleansed? So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times as the man of God had told him. He swallowed his pride. He swallowed his pride and said, you know what? I don't like it. I don't necessarily agree with it. But if the man of God is saying this, I'm going to swallow my pride and I'm going to do this. Are you with me? So he did it. And his flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. Thankfully, somebody spoke some sense to him. He came to his senses. He got over himself. He got over his pride. He got over his preconceived ideas. Hear me, somebody. And he humbled himself and said, that water's nasty, but I'll get in it. I don't like how the man of God treated me, but I'm going to get over it. And I'm going to do what he said to do. 
And once he got over his pride, hear me somebody, once he got over his pride and who he was and what he had, and he laid all of that aside, because none of that mattered at that point. None of that mattered at that point. That wasn't going to clint. That wasn't what he needed. He laid all of that aside, his power, his position, his prestige, and he went down into that water and dipped. Humbled himself. It's a, I hope you're seeing this today. He received what he needed to receive, and he would not have received it otherwise had he hung on to his pride and said, I'm not going to do that. I'm not doing that. I'm not going down there to that altar. I'm not doing that. I'm not going to get down on my knees. I'm not doing that. I'm not going to shed a tear. No one's going to see me cry. I'm not doing that. I'm not going to let anybody lay hands on me and pray for me. They're not do- I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. With arms folded, I'm not doing that. You, listen, your, your, your pride, yourself, is a hindering you. From receiving what you may need to receive from the Lord because you can't get over yourself and move past yourself to just say, you know what, I'm going to humble myself because I need to receive something from the Lord. I'm not going to let pride be a hindrance in my life. If I need to kneel, I'll kneel. If I need to lay, if I blubber, I blubber. Y'all, I'm a blubberer. I don't even care. I've had snot flowing, tears flowing, I'm telling you. And there ain't nothing like it, the presence of God and being, over, being touched by the hand of God. When you're really touched by the hand of God, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you haven't experienced it, please try it. Come on, get down here and get a touch from the Lord till some snot and tears flow. <laughs> if that's what happens, I'm not saying it has to happen. But don't let that, I'm not going to show any emotion like that. That's pride. Can't let anybody see me cry. Can't let anybody see me get excited. Can't let, I'm not, you need to get over yourself. Well, I'm too, I'm too important for that. That's what Naaman thought. I'm too important to do that. I'm a man of position and power. Like people serve me. I'm too, I can't do what he's, come on, are you seeing this? And it was nothing but stinking pride. The enemy wants to use pride, especially in men, to keep you in your seat, to keep you bound, to keep you held back, to keep you right where you're at in your tracks. You can't move any forward, any further with God. You're stuck until you're willing to lay some pride down and say, i got to humble myself. Now that looks different. There's different ways of doing that. But I think, help me, Holy Spirit. All right. Give up that pride. You hear me, somebody? Young men, young men, give up that pride. It leads to destruction. Leads to destruction. Only by pride comes contention. Did the funeral this last Sunday for a 20-year-old. I can't help but wonder if pride wasn't a little bit involved. I'm not backing down. Pride. I'm not going to humble myself. I'm not going to... I'm going to be right. I'm going to get the last word. I'm going to... Pride. Pride leads to destruction. Pride will take you straight to hell. All right, let's look at another young man. Thankfully, again, again, thankfully, Naaman came to his senses and ended up humbling himself and he received. I'm praying for that to happen to you today. But I want to look at another man real quick and then we're going to move on. I want you to go over to Mark chapter 10 or you can just look on the screen. Mark chapter 10, Jesus is talking to a crowd of people and a man runs up to him. Now, uh, there's another place that... that, that describes him as a rich, young ruler, okay? So again, this is someone who has position, he's a ruler, he has power, he has prestige, and he has wealth, okay? 
Listen, nothing wrong with any of these things, but they can tend to make you very self-reliant. Very self-reliant and very prideful in who you are and what you have. Hello? Okay? So this man runs up to Jesus and he falls on his knees before him and he says, What must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, "Keep the, you know the commandments, don't murder, don't commit adultery, don't commit adultery, don't commit adultery, don't commit adultery. Y'all, it's one of the Ten Commandments. I just, I see that so prevalent even within the church. Don't commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. And then he says, teacher, I have kept all of this since I was a boy. I've been a good guy. I'm a good guy. I've, I've done things right. Don't cheat on my wife. I ain't killed nobody. I don't lie, and I've, I honor my father and mother. I'm a good dude. I'm a good old boy. Are you with me? I've done all of this. This is what Jesus said. One thing you lack. One thing you lack. Go sell everything you have and give it to the poor. And then you'll have treasure in heaven, and then come follow me. At this, the man's face fell, and he went away sad because he had great wealth. He wasn't willing to give it up. And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were amazed at his words, but Jesus said again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Now, the first thing that I want you to notice, and I think I skipped this part as I was trying to read through this quickly, is that it says that Jesus looked at him and loved him. Jesus looked at him and loved him. Now, I want you to just hear me clearly, right? Jesus wasn't mad and upset that this man had position and power and prestige and wealth. He wasn't mad about that. He wasn't upset about it. God doesn't care if you have all of these things. I think it's important for godly people to have some power and to have some wealth and to have some... God, we need godly people that, that are in these places. Hello? God doesn't want you to be poor and, and, and not ever seek any position or anything like that. But he wasn't mad at him. Jesus looked at him and loved him. He's not mad about that. He's mad when all of that has you. He gets upset when all of that has you. It has your heart. It has your devotion. It gets all of your attention and all of your affection. Hello? That you begin to serve that instead of Him. That life becomes all about that instead of Him. And that's where this young man was. And Jesus said, you lack one thing. Wealth has got a grip on you. Power and prestige, who you are, all of that's got a grip on you. And it's caused you to become prideful. And you've put all of your trust and hope in that. You know why I know he put all his trust and hope in that? Because he wasn't willing to give it up. All your life is wrapped up in that. And this man went away sorrowful. You know why? Because he chose earthly things. He chose temporal things. He chose worldly things. He chose all of that over following Jesus. He had an opportunity... To come be a disciple of Jesus and follow Him and do ministry with Him and do life with Him. But He wasn't willing to give up the one thing that was holding Him back. And Jesus knew it was holding Him back. That's why He said, are you willing to give it up? And He wasn't. He wasn't. It had His heart. And so that's why Jesus talks about these things. He said in Luke, because Jesus talked about these things a lot, y'all. Believe it or not, Jesus probably talked about possessions and money and, and just because it's everyday life. He talked about it as much or more than anything. Hello? It's all through your Bible. In Luke chapter 16, Jesus said, No one can serve two masters. Either you'll hate the one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. That's where this young man was. He was serving money. And Jesus said, are you willing to stop serving money and come follow me? And he wasn't. It was a hindrance to him. 
He's not against you having it unless it becomes a hindrance to you from following Him. Are you with me? Don't let anything become a hindrance from following Jesus and receiving what you need to receive from Him. You cannot serve both God and money. The Pharisees who loved money heard all of this and were sneering at Jesus. And He said to them, You are the ones who justify yourselves in the eyes of God. But God knows your hearts. What people value highly is detestable in God's sight. They were wrapped up in the wrong things. Are you hearing me today? Both of these people, there was something there. And I don't know what it might be for you. There was something there. And at the root of it all was pride. That was trying to hinder them from receiving from the Lord and from following Jesus. Are you with me? One of them came to his senses and said, I'm going to shed all of that because I really need healing. And and if this is what what i got to do, then I'll do it. The other one rejected it. It's up to you. Jesus left it up to this rich young ruler. Do you want to follow me? Are you willing to? It was up to him. And he went away sad. Listen, Listen to this today. He went away sad. Why? Because the things of this world can't satisfy and make you happy like He can. Right? Don't let anything be a hindrance. Hello? All right, we've only made it through the first point. I'm going to speed up the train a little bit. Sound good? Let's skip on down here. So you need to, you need to give up anything that might be hindering you. And the Holy Spirit will speak to you and tell you what that is. He'll show you what that is. It might be as simple as social media. But if it's hindering you, give it up. Amen? Secondly, you need to give up anything that might be entangling you. Okay? He says, let us throw off the sin that so easily entangles now to me this is entanglement is like next level it's more than a hindrance it's more than something like blocking you and stopping you it's something that's got a grip on you it's something that wraps you up it drags you down that ensnares you and traps you and that's exactly what the enemy wants to do if you mess with fire you're going to get burned right so we need to get rid of any and all sin listen we need to give up Anything. And, and I want everybody to listen to me, but especially you young people, because I, I preach this, I preach this consistently because it's the truth of God's word. You need to give up anything that's unholy, that's ungodly, and that's unrighteous. You need to ask yourself with anything and everything that you're doing, is this holy? Is this godly? Is this righteous? Is this pleasing to the Lord or is this displeasing? And listen, filter it. Filter it through that. Filter it through your conscience. Filter it through the Holy Spirit. Filter it through the Word of God. And if it's unholy, then why are you doing it? Aren't we supposed to be dead to sin? If it's ungodly, if I couldn't look at you and say, Woo, that sure is a godly thing you're doing there, brother. If it's ungodly, then why are we doing it? If it's unrighteous, if, it, if it's not pleasing to the Lord, then why are you doing it? You need to give it up. Get rid of it. Hello? We're supposed to be holy and godly and righteous. I thought I'd get a, a louder amen right there. James chapter 1, it says, Therefore, get rid, give up all moral filth. And the evil that is so prevalent. And humbly accept the word planted in you. Which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word. And so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Hello? Ephesians 4 tells us. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. With whom you were sealed. For the day of redemption. Get rid of. Give up. All bitterness and rage and anger and brawling and slander along with every form of malice. Give up anything that is impure, that is improper. You can, you can study this out in Scripture. The Bible talks about things that are that's improper for God's holy people. 
Sexual immorality is improper for God's holy people. And I will keep hammering on it and preaching it from the pulpit until there's conviction and until God's people get right. Judgment begins in the house of God. You know, we want to we want to harp on you know, people harp on homosexuality and all of that, but we've there's been adultery and fornication and all of that between same-sex couples for years. It's all sin. Anything, anything outside the box of marriage between a man and a woman, according to the Holy Bible, is immoral. It's improper. It's fornication. It's adultery. It's all the things that the Bible speaks about specifically. It uses those words. And it specifically, plainly says that people that do these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Because it's unholy, ungodly, unrighteous, and ungodly people are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Like we've got to wake up and realize that we've got to, we, we've got to get rid of the sin in the camp. That if you're doing things and hanging on to things that God's against, that it's corrupting, like there's a consequence to that. I almost took us to Joshua to where Achan. God said, everything in the first city that you, that you conquer in Jericho is holy. It's to be dedicated to me. Well, Achan, is that his name? Achan? It's been a minute since I've read it. Yeah, Achan. I thought that sounded right. Right? <laughs> he ended up Achan real bad. But... <laughs> Because he got stoned to death. But how do, I can't believe I just went there. But it didn't turn out good for him. Are you listening to me? I'm trying to wake you up here. But he decided all that looked good. I know God said, don't touch that. I'm not supposed to have that. That's not for me. But he liked it and he took it and he hid it in his tent. Well, they went out to fight some other enemies. Got, got embarrassed. Got their tail ends whooped. Went back and said, what in the world's going on, God? And he said, there's sin in the camp. I can't bless you when there's sin in the camp. You want my blessings. You want victory. But there's sin in the camp. You want me to bless you. You want victory. you got to get rid of the sin. There's some things you got to give up. Somebody's got something that doesn't belong to them. And it's in the camp. And I'm not going to bless you and give you victory until you give it up. Somebody hear what this man of God is preaching. They figured out that it was Achan, that he had taken some of the holy things for himself, hid them in his tent. They took him and his entire family outside the camp, stoned them to death. Now, that's Old Testament. <laughs> Praise you, God, for grace that we, we're not going to be stoning anybody up in here today, okay? Praise the Lord. But the point of all of that is... There's serious consequences when you don't hear and heed the word of the Lord. The Lord clearly said, don't touch that. But then we've got people that are taking things that aren't theirs. Young men, if you hadn't put a ring on it, she is not yours. And if you take her, it is unholy. And you may be in the dark under some covers, but God sees it. I'm just going to shoot it straight. I'm going to back off. I'm feeling froggy. You need to hear this. I was scared to death when I was your age. Because everything sent you to hell. Seriously, I didn't do nothing. Listen, this, this, I'm, I'm serious. I, I'm bragging myself just a little bit here. My mom and dad went out of town. I had 11 o'clock curfew. Y'all, I'm 20 years old, still living at home. 20 years old, full-grown man. I've been shaving since I was nine. <laughs> I just shaved clean yesterday. Help me, Holy Spirit. I get too silly sometimes. A full-grown man, right? Paying my own bills, driving my own truck. But I got 11 o'clock curfew. And you know what I did? Mom and dad went out of town. I was at some friend's house. 
Guess what time I was home? 11 o'clock. And this was before 360 cell phone. I didn't even have a cell phone. But I was home at 11 o'clock. Honoring, your, honoring, my father and my, honoring my father and my mother. Right? Rules been set. I don't make the rules. I just keep them. Doing what you're supposed to do. You know what? Because, because I had a heart to honor God. Not just to honor my parents, but to honor God. God's watching me. God sees. <sighs> Got to get rid of the moral filth and the sin. Listen at 1 Thessalonians. I'm reading the Bible to y'all, okay? Look at this. It says, It is God's will that you should be sanctified. What does that mean? That's a big word. Sanctified, it means holy. It means set apart. It means that you're to be set apart. You're to be different. Hello? Clean? Pure? That you should avoid sexual immorality. That each of you should learn to control your own body. There is such a thing talked about much in the Bible called self-control. It's a fruit of the Spirit, in fact. Self-control. And you know what? It's up to you. No one's making you make out with that girl. It's up to you. You chose that. No one's making you sleep with that boy. It's up to you. You chose that. Because you don't, you don't have self-control. And you don't have enough fear of the Lord to stop sinning. Hmm. Control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable. You have to ask yourself, is this holy? Is this honorable? If I was in the living room with my parents, would this be honorable? Yeah. Hello. You're irritating me, Pastor. I don't like you. Good. You're probably doing something wrong. Not in passionate lust like the pagans that don't know God. They don't live for God. They're pagans who do not know God and that in this manner no one should wrong or take advantage of a brother or sister. The Lord will punish... Oh, here we go. Pay attention here. This is in your Bible. The Lord will punish all those who commit such sins as we have told you and warned you before. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Therefore, anyone who rejects this instruction does not reject a human being, but God. You're not rejecting me. You're rejecting the word of the Lord. And the very God who gives you His Holy Spirit. Listen, I'm, I'm moving on. But if it's unholy, give it up. If it's unrighteous, stop doing it. If it's ungodly, stop it. Quit it. Filter some things. Get some self-control. Get the fear of the Lord in your life. Understand that there's punishment. There's consequences. I don't want to end up like Achan. Hello? I don't want my kids to end up in that position. And so I'm going to get rid of anything. Listen, what he's saying in our text. Throw off. Give it up. Get rid of anything that hinders and entangles. Pornography entangles. Nicotine entangles. Alcohol entangles. Sexual perversion entangles. All of these things entangle. Anger entangles. It gets a grip on you. It controls you. It becomes your master. You become a slave to it. I can't not look at that. You're a slave to it. The Bible says that you become a slave to whatever you yield to. Alcohol, I have to have it. I can't live without it. You're a slave to it. Does it make you do holy things? Does it make you think godly thoughts? Does it make you want to do righteous things? then maybe you need to get rid of it. You're irritating me, Pastor. Oh, I feel it. I feel it. I feel like I'm irritating some people. 
I know I listed a few things. We could probably go on and on. And I'm not, not trying to list things. I'm trying to make a point that you need to, get, you need to give up things that are, that are entangling you and keeping you from following Jesus. He said, if you want to come after me, you got to listen. I'm going I'm to hit this again because there's such a false teaching out there. That if I want to follow Jesus, all I have to do is pray a prayer somewhere along the way. And get dunked in some water somewhere along the way. And I'm okay. Because I prayed a prayer and I got dunked in water. Jesus never said anything about praying a prayer. He never invited anybody to pray a prayer. And he never baptized anybody. What he did say is if you want to follow me, you must deny yourself Take up your cross and follow me. You got to let go. You got to cut the string on some things. You got to let go of some things that are going to hold you back and keep you from following me. You got to die to it. You got to die to it. I got a scripture that I just wrote up on my board in my office. He says, Am I am I now trying to please man? Because if I was trying to please man, how can I please God? I'm not trying to please man. I'm trying to please God. I'm a servant of Christ. Right? So you have to give up this desire to please people, to fit in, to go along with the crowd. I don't want to. I don't want to be sanctified because that makes me seem weird. I would rather be weird and be holy than to fit in with the crowd and be condemned. Hello? Thank you, Lord. All right, real quick, I'm going to wrap this up, okay? I meant to take the most time on on those, but I also want to say today that just a couple more things that you need to give up Whatever's weighing you down. He said, let us run with perseverance. Let us run with perseverance. It's hard to run a race if you're weighed down with things. You're weighed down. What weighs us down? The cares of life. Worry. Anxiety. Right? Luke 21, he says, be careful or your heart will be weighed down with the carousing and drunkenness and the anxieties of life. And that day will close in on you suddenly like a trap. In Mark chapter 4, it says that the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desire for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Most people get weighed down with anxiety. The worries and the cares of life. Hello? It's true. Now listen, we can't stop adulting. (laughs) I've seen people sometimes, they're like, I don't feel like adulting today. Well, we can't stop adulting. It's who we are. I can't stop parenting. We can't quit our jobs. We can't stop paying the bills. Like, we have to have all of these things. But you can have all of that and carry all of it. Uh, You can't get rid of that. But you can get rid of the worry. The anxiety. Hello? You can get rid of all of that. And you should get rid of all of that. Because, first of all, it's unbiblical. Well, I just can't help it. He wouldn't have told us to to be anxious for nothing if it wasn't possible for us to be anxious for nothing. He wouldn't have given us instruction that was impossible. It's unbiblical for you to go around worried and anxious all the time, weighed down with the cares of life till it just chokes out the life out of you. Hello? And you can't serve the Lord. You can't follow Him because you're so weighed down. Y'all still here? So give up the things that are, weigh, that are weighing you down so you can run with perseverance. You know, the thing about runners is they get as light as they can get. They get them cute little shorts on. Them, even the boys, them little shorty shorts, them little lightweight, look like a, look like a Walmart sack. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, good Lord. Everybody had to wear put on sunglasses if I put those on. I'd be blinding the whole chat. What's that streak of lightning? That's just Dave's legs. <laughs> It'd be slow lightning. <laughs> I 
I don't even know what I was talking. What was I talking about now? I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Light, light, light. You know, I don't, I don't dress up, Billy. I don't dress up like we did when we went duck hunting. I, Billy was trying to move through that water, going after those. Had those waders on, all that stuff on, carrying it. I'm like, Billy, you gonna, you gonna crash and burn, buddy. <laughs> no, you get light. You get light so you can run. You get light shoes. You don't run in big work boots. That'd be silly. But so many people trying to run the Christian walk in their, in their big work boots and jeans and their waders and their backpacks and their... And I, I'm, I'm just trying to serve I'm just trying to make it. How you doing? Oh, I'm surviving. How you, oh, how I'm making it. <laughs> Bogged down, burdened down with all the cares of life. We still have to deal with the cares, but you can get rid of, my point is, you can get rid of, you can get rid of the anxiety and the worry. It's unbiblical, it's unhealthy, and it's unproductive. Which of you, by worrying, can add a single day to your life? Jesus talked about all this. Look in Matthew chapter 6. Worrying is not going to keep your kids safe. It's not going to put another meal on the table. You can sit in the corner and worry yourself sick. Not going to change a thing, but make you sick. Get rid of it. Get rid of anything that is hindering you, bogging you down, holding you back. If it's hindering you, if it's entangling you, if it's weighing you down, get rid of that fear. Get rid of that anxiety. You don't have to walk with anxiety. I know. I've testified to you. God can set you free. God can set you free. I used to deal with that a lot, quite a lot. And God has set me free. He set me free. I don't walk around like that, like I used to. Hello? Get rid of it. Give it up. Give it up. Why do you want to carry that worry and anxiety and fear and just have it to where you're just barely surviving? You're not called to survive. You're called to thrive. Hello? He came so we could have life and have it abundant, not so we could have worry and dread and fear and anxiety and have to take all this medication and can't get out of the bed and can't function. And what in the world? That's not God's will. I don't want to go anywhere. Too scared. Too... That's not God. That is not God. You can get victory over that. You don't have to keep... Hello? All right. Last thing. Last thing, and we're going to pray for you in these altars, but give up. Give up whatever may be distracting. Anything that's distracting. If it's distracting you, give it up. Y'all, that's, that's the main reason I've been off of... Uh, Social media, Facebook, Instagram, all of that for over a year. And that's the main reason right there. I just felt like it was a distraction to me personally. It was a distraction. It was a hindrance. It wasn't producing what it needed to produce. If you're not careful, it will produce anxiety. It will produce comparison. It will produce discontentment. It will produce pride. Because I'm doing way better than everybody else. <laughs> look at me and look at them. I'm feeling pretty good about myself. <laughs> you know, comparison, comparison, you lose either way. Because it's either going to make you prideful or it's going to make you insecure. <laughs> That's why the Bible says it's not wise to compare yourselves amongst each other. But the Bible says rejoice with those who rejoice. I, listen, I ain't in competition with you. That's right. yes. You roll up in here in a new pickup, I'm going to high-five you. I'm going to rejoice with you because I'm as happy as a lark in my 2014 Toyota Tundra. I, I'm, I'm not in competition with you. You know what I'm saying? I don't care. You can get three new trucks. Don't matter to me. What? That, I don't even know if I'm supposed to go here, Holy Spirit. Help me. But... Like, why does that, why does stuff like that mess you up? I got a nice truck. What does it matter to me if you get 10 new trucks? It, it doesn't change my life one bit. 
But people get all messed up about that and get mad at that person. And jealous. It's, it's jealousy. It's jealousy and envy and all the things that the Bible tells us to get rid of. Somebody gets a new house. Well, I wish I could get a new house. I don't know how they get a new house, and I don't get a new house. I need a bigger house. I wish my house was that nice. And a lot of that... Just comparison, discontentment. All of a sudden, I'm not happy. I was totally happy. I was totally happy. Now I'm not happy. Nothing changed other than you saw so-and-so's new house. And now you're mad at them because God's blessed them and they got a new house. What in the, what in the world? This is messed up. And you know what? Let me, let me wrap back around to my point. I got I to bring this plane down. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm flying, y'all. That brings this thing down. It's distraction. It's distraction. It doesn't have anything to do with you, but now you're all consumed with it. Their life. Well, I got my own kids to raise. I got my own bills to pay, my own problems, my own marriage, my own... Well, so-and-so got to go on a date. They go out on a date every week. We don't ever go out on a date. Well, now all of a sudden, you're discontent and unhappy with your marriage when you were totally fine. Because you got totally distracted because so and so over here is just, you know, just Mr. Romeo killing it, you know. <laughs> I'm just like, maybe, you know, maybe we should both get off of. I'm making stuff up. She's, she doesn't, I'm just making stuff up. But this stuff, do you realize this stuff happens? And some of you are laughing and look at because you know it's true. Yeah. I, wish my, I wish my husband could be more like that. He brought her flower. He, he brought his wife flowers. And then last week, he brought her this. I don't know. He never brings me anything. You're, and you're totally distracted yep. Yep. from your life, from your business, from your walk with God, all because you're sitting there. Yep. And you're comparing, and now you're discontent, and now you're mad. <laughs> and now you're unhappy and in a bad mood. Because so-and-so went on a date. What? Who cares? They had steak for supper and we eat pancakes. Who cares? All right, listen, are you, do, you see, do you see this? It's foolish. It's harmful. Like, give it up. Give it up. This is nonsense. And then the next thing you know, next thing you know, next thing you know, you're anxious. Because I saw what so-and-so posted, and I'm almost thinking, that might have been directed at me. I think maybe they're talking about our church. Now I'm all messed up because of something they said. That I don't even know if that's what they meant, but that's what the enemy made me think they meant. And I am completely distracted from being a father, a husband, a pastor. Completely distracted. And that's exactly what the enemy wants. He wants to keep you locked right there. So you're distracted. You're distracted. Even when I go to pray, I'm thinking about... I'm thinking about... Distracted. If it's a hindrance, give it up. If it's entangling you, give it up. If it's weighing you down, give it up. If it's causing you to lose focus of Jesus, give it up. If it's coming between you and Jesus, give it up. If it's, if it's causing you to not be able to run your race well, give it up. Let us throw aside everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame. Consider Him who endured such things so that you 
will not grow weary and lose heart. Chances are, chances are, and I'm closing, every person in here, you've got something somewhere that's either hindering you, entangling you, weighing you down, or distracting you. And if it's any one of those four, and you say today, I got got something, I, I need to give it up. I want you to stand to your feet. If I'm talking to you, come on, people are standing. You're not going to be the only one. I want you to stand right now. I've got, I've got some things that I need to give up. It's hindering me. It's entangling me. It's weighing me down. It's distracting me. And the Lord's dealing with me. I need to give it up. Come on, get on your feet. I believe there's more. I need to give it up. He's, I know he's talking to me. I need to give it up. It could be anxiety. It could be fear. It, maybe he's talking to you about social media. I don't know. It could be something that's just hindering you. It could, be, it could be anger or anything that's hindering your walk with the Lord. Come on, I want you to bow your heads. Come on, people have already stood. I want you to stand. Come on, take that bold step. If you say, if you say and that's me, I got some things I need to give up. Thank you, Pastor Cam. Can I get my prayer team to go ahead and come to the altar, please? If you're, if you're part of the staff, you're on the board, you, you're part of our altar workers. You've been invited to be up here. I want you to come up here. Get ready to help us pray for people. Come on. I feel like, I, I strongly feel like there's some young people. I really feel like there's some young people. The Holy Spirit's dealing with you. I want you to stand right now. Don't worry about anybody else, what they're doing, what they're thinking. I want you to stand right now. Come on. I know there's some young... You need The Holy Spirit's dealing with you. There's something you need to give up. Come on, I want you to stand right now. I feel that strongly. There's some young people. Come on, get on your feet. Get on your feet. Don't let the enemy lie to you. Don't let him distract you. Come on, get on your feet. He's dealing with me. I know there's something I need to give up. Come on, I'm going to give you a couple more minutes to stand. Come on, you're not alone. There's lots of people. I believe there's more, y'all. I know the Holy Spirit led me this direction. He's trying to clean some things up in our lives. He's trying to help us. I want you to get rid of it. Because it's hurting you. It's holding you back. It's keeping you from receiving. Come on, sir. Maybe it's pride. I don't know. Maybe it's unforgiveness or bitterness, ma'am. I don't know. What is it? It doesn't matter what it is. But you're ready today to give it up. Come on, one more time. There's some young people. I know there is. You need to stand. He's knocking on your heart right now. You need to stand. What's holding you back? Come on, you're ready to give it up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on, I'm just waiting on the Holy Spirit because some people are still standing. Don't wait on anybody else. Don't worry what anybody else is doing. It's just you and it's just you and the Lord right now. Come on, He's going to move in some people's lives. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. People are still standing. Come on, if He's tugging at your heart, get on your feet. If He's tugging at your heart. Listen, I was at a I was at a conference, the whole sermon, I, I don't even hardly know exactly everything that was preached. I remember it was a powerful sermon by Kim Owens. But the whole time, the Lord was just hammering me. That's when I gave up social media. The whole time, the Lord was saying, give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up. I took it all, I, I, I took it all, gave it all up. Come on, he's talking to you. Come on, you want to give up that anxiety? You want to give that up? You want to give up that habit that you know is not pleasing to him? Today's the day. Today's the day. If you're standing, I want you to, I want you, if you will, to take another step and begin to move to the altar. Come on, this altar is a place. I was telling the prayer team this morning, the altar. In biblical times, an altar is where you went to sacrifice something. The altar is where things died. The altar is where you laid things down. 
and you gave it to the Lord. What you're doing when you come right now, just spread out across the front here. We've got people ready to pray with you and for you. But the altar, the altar is where you would bring something and lay it down, right? And say, I'm going to leave it there. Lord, burn it up with fire. I don't want it anymore. Consume it. Take it completely away from me. Come on, I want you to bow your heads as the altar team is moving through and praying with you and for you. Come on, Matt. Uh, Pastor Garrett, y'all come on, begin to pray. But I want you to pray this, Lord, that today, whatever it is that you brought to the altar, come on, I want you to just lay it down. Just say, Lord, I lay this down. I give it to you. I give it to you, Lord. I don't want it anymore. It's hindering me. It's held me back long enough. Today, I'm bringing it to the altar and I'm laying it down right here because I don't want it. I don't want it. It's holding me back. It's holding me back. I'm done with it today. I'm giving it to you and I want you to consume it with fire. I want you to completely take it away. I'm not going to pick it back up again because I'm leaving it at the altar. Come on, just begin to talk to Him. He hears you. He hears you. When I was at that conference and I gave up social media, I was in the altars and I said, Lord, help me. Help me. And you know what? It hasn't even really been a struggle. I haven't even missed it. Don't even care. That's been over a year ago. My life's been so much better, so much freer. Don't have to deal with all the things I was talking to you about earlier. Don't have to worry about it. It's done. Come on, I want you out there to stretch your hand this way. I want you to pray for somebody up here. Come on, the Lord's doing a work. People are giving some things up. It's going to make them better. It's going to make them stronger. It's going to help them run their race with perseverance. Come on, this is good. This is good.
there's still some praying in the altar, y'all continue. But I'd like for everybody else to stand, if you will. I want us to, I want us to close this service out today as they sing that again. As they sing that again, I want us to just make this our prayer across this room. Because I really feel like the, the Holy Spirit is dealing with, with some that maybe you didn't come up here. But the Holy Spirit's speaking to you. I want you just where you're at before you leave today. Just say, Lord, thank you for your conviction. I don't want anything in my life that would hinder me, that would entangle me. I don't want anything weighing me down. And I don't want anything distracting me from following you. Lord, I give you permission. I believe your way's better. I want to follow you. God, remove it from my life. I give you permission. Please continue to convict. Continue to convict and help me. Give me the grace that I need to give up anything that I need to give up. Amen. Can we do that? As we sing this again, I want you to pray this before you leave today. Lord, I give it up. Anything hindering, anything entangling, anything weighing me down, anything distracting me, I give it to you, Lord. Expose it. Show me. Show me, Lord. I'll obey you. some people gave some things up today I tell you anything that the Lord is asking you to give up it's because he's got something better hello I think of it sometimes like a little toddler because we've had you know we've had toddlers years and years of toddlers six kids so you know sometimes they'll have something that you know they don't need to have that that's gonna hurt them that's not good for them but they want it right and so a wise parent will get something else that's better, that's not going to hurt them, and will go to that child and just say, hey, here, let me have that. You take this. But that kid oftentimes will fight you. Right? And I just see the church like that sometimes. I'm like, why are you fighting him? He's trying to give you something so much better. If you'll just turn loose of that, that he knows is hindering you, it's going to harm you. It's going to lead you to destruction. You're going to hurt yourself with that. Let him have it. Stop fighting him. Let him have it. Give it to him. And let him give you something so much better. Amen? I love that. I love that. The Bible talks about how we can exchange our, our mourning for joy and our, our spirit of heaviness for a garment of praise and... 
Ah, so much better with him. Amen. Hey, I'm, I'm super excited. and Anybody can stick around that wants to. But after the service today, I get to baptize my good friend and brother, Billy Kyle. Um, so if you want to stick around for that, <clears throat> thankful to have some of their some of their family and friends here today. Thank y'all for being here. Uh, so you're dismissed. You can begin to make your way outside and here in about oh ten minutes or so, we're gonna we're gonna dunk that brother. I may hold him under a little longer. I don't know. He might <laughs> make sure he's good and repented. Hey, love you, church. Ladies, be back here at 5 o'clock tonight. It's going to be a good time.